Good day, strategy gamers, and welcome back to episode five of our Let's Play series, uh, War in the East 2, 1941 scenario playing as the Soviets. In this episode, we're going to be covering the completion of turn two with the second half of our ground movement phase, uh, looking at the southern uh, half of our front and our continued withdrawal and, and establishing of a front line against the Germans as they advanced into the Soviet Union. I've had some great comments uh, in the last couple of days that I, I finally had a chance to catch up on. Just want to send a huge uh, thank you to Misha and Louis in particular. I, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Perhaps it is Louis, but I'm going to say Louis until I'm corrected otherwise. Um, and they, they've just had some fantastic feedback, not only for myself in this scenario, but also uh, I'm hopeful that that others will be able to take a look at that feedback and say, yeah, you know what, this this is what I was missing, and uh, now I have a very good understanding of how to better handle the situation as the Soviets. So one of the first things I want to talk about is if you go to map info, uh, we've covered this in the Stalingrad to Berlin series as one of our mechanics, but there's this capture dates that you can toggle on and off. I've actually had this happen to me a few times where it's not showing, so let's try switching the map mode here. Let's try turning off the weather. Well, that's interesting. It's actually not toggling the capture dates. There we go. Um. Perhaps I actually wasn't zoomed in far enough. I thought I was already there. Uh, this just highlights in blue, historically, the date in which the Germans captured that particular city. And then when the Soviets took it back, because eventually they did end up taking back everything that was um, invaded by the Germans. So blue is the German date, red is the Soviet date. It can be a bit of a benchmark, right? It's like here we see that historically they got to... Uh, Mogilev on July 26, which is about three and a half turns from now. Um, right now, it looks like they might get there a little sooner than that. Now, I will say that that is an incredible tool to help understand, you know, how how fast should I be retreating and is it too fast, too aggressive or not aggressive enough, etc. Um, I think it's a good gauge my particular play style, though, I'm not going to be looking at it in that much detail. If I have a question about something, I might reference it off camera and such. Um, but one of the great things that I love about this game and everything about these Gary Grigsby series is that you can actually, I feel you can immerse yourself a little bit because of the detail, the scale, the scope of control to, to kind of say, you know what, this this isn't a simulation of exactly what happened in 1941 at the beginning of Operation Barbarossa. That was simply our starting point, right? That, that is our historical frame for where we're starting this narrative. After turn one, how I like to view it is after turn one, this is now my take with a computer representing my opponent of how I would have tried to make some decisions. And obviously no one person can make all the decisions in a war effort as large as this, but just um, to the scale that the game allows you to interface with those decisions, um, this this is the approach I would have taken. And, and for right, wrong, or indifferent, right, there may be some situations where it maybe would have been better to let them capture, um, this was Mogilev, before July 26, thus ensuring you had more troops for the defense of Smolensk, just making it up as a, an example. Now, the, the thing to be careful of, though, is the game is won and lost off victory points, right? So it's not a, oh, the Germans got to Moscow, therefore they automatically win type of game. It is a culmination of victory points being acquired by either side to then try to win or lose. Um, and in this sense, as the Germans capture things before their historical capture date, that gets them more victory points. The longer I hold on to them, it gets me more victory points, etc. 
Um, so it does have some relevance. I'm not trying to discard that. Um, but I'm not going to do my entire strategy, I guess is what I'm saying, based off of the historical capture dates. Uh, because in a lot of senses, I do want this to be my attempt. Um, but I think it's a great tool, and, and I appreciate um, Louis and, and Misha bringing it up in the channel comments. And that's very, very helpful advice for new players and myself. With that said, I want to again emphasize that for this particular Let's Play series, this playthrough, um, I, I've stated again and again, I am at best an average player. And maybe that is even an overstatement. Maybe I'm actually a below average player um, and I'm incorrectly evaluating my own performance. So that's fine. That That's not looking for any sympathy points there. But what I'm trying to get at is um, this, this all might end in 20 turns where I lose. Uh, it, it could very well happen, and that's fine. I, I just want you, the viewer, to know that I, I haven't done this 17 times. I don't know exactly the path to victory playing as the Soviets right now. Um, and if we do lose more quickly than we would have liked, or if the scenario is going to, to end, we'll play it out to that conclusion. But then we'll, we'll come right back and we'll, we'll try something else again. So there's, there's no worries. It's not like this is our only shot at this. So... All of that preamble done, uh, let's... Oh, no, I'm sorry, I want one more uh, note on this because this was regarding comments that Misha had contributed to the channel as well. A, a wealth of information uh, that Misha has contributed to the channel, but a, a core part of it I think is very relevant to highlight, and that is, as the Soviets, it is good to focus on putting units um, as you retreat on the other side of rivers, in swamps, and in heavy woods, because the foremost units that are attacking you are for the most part going to be motorized and panzer elements. And an infantry division in swamps or heavy woods is going to have a lot of fun slowing down a panzer division. The balance that you have to strike, Misha points out, is that you want to have your retreat be at the pace where you're engaging their motorized units in those hexes, but you haven't let their infantry catch up, right? Because if infantry then catch up and surround you in those hexes, they'll make quick work of you because they can easily clear out heavy woods. Motorized units less so. So, all of that said, let's get into it. Uh, based off of a lot of that feedback and having taken a quick gauge at those historical dates, we are going to adjust ever so slightly some of our decisions in this episode from what I probably would have intended in previous episodes. I'm not changing the overall strategy that I've so far conveyed in the, the series, but some of the tactics we're going to adjust a little. So for example, here we were going to have all of these units withdraw to hold the line between Smolensk and Bryansk. I'm now going to adjust that where a lot of these units I want to have actually... Um, be a bit of a forward screen on the line where they're holding here along the Dnieper to try to slow the advance towards Smolensk because I worry now looking at after the Germans turn just how close they've gotten to Smolensk and whether or not my defenses are strong enough there to hold. So we're going to take some of these units then and build a bit of a line here in front of um, Smolensk to try to slow them down. And one of the areas that I wanted to look at was right here. We have this rough terrain on this rail hex, and it's crossing a river, so I'm going to toss one of these rifle divisions right there. And you see that's now a defensive value of 10 that will then also exert this zone of control to slow down any of their forces. Then I'm going to take this unit, I think, up here on the other side of this river. It's still only 2. I'd really like to have more than that. But we'll, we'll keep them there. Here I'm going to move them into the Swamp Hex. So that's now 9, but you see how effective this is getting. And then I'm going to move you over here to the city, I think. Or maybe on the other side of the river. That's not so great either. Let's try moving you down even further. What about city and swamp? No. Okay. Here, your 150 men were just going to disband you as you're depleted and 
and go into a bit of an explanation for that maybe in another episode, but I'm going to disband you. This rifle division, I'm going to move up here. All right, just to try to slow them down. This particular HQ now, it's probably going to be more relevant to have them up here. This tank division, we're going to take them off the train and they'll rest up there. These two HQ units, actually one of you, uh, move up here probably. Just a little closer. Put them kind of in the line of fire there. Take that mechanized division off the train. This HQ goes back here. Okay, so we've done some of that now. Um, the other thing looking here is I was wondering if maybe I should have another unit in this hex too. So I think we might take one of these tank divisions and move them up here. And then let's see if we can't attach any support units to them. No, we don't have any support units ready, actually. Very well. They're all on reserve, that's fine. Do we have anything in Smolensk proper that we can bring up to try to help here? Let's also bring up this rifle division. And then we'll pull them. We've already used up a lot of their movement. There we go. So I, I think that just helps fortify a little bit the line on the other side of the Dnieper there. So I, I'm more comfortable about that now. But I kept thinking about that Smolensk situation and just worrying about their ability to break through there too quickly. So I think we've reinforced it quite a bit with these screening forces in our front line. Now, of course, the question that leaves us with is, are we strong enough in between Smolensk and Bryansk? Because we've taken forces that were going to be allocated for those hexes um, and diverted them, which now means we are very thin with only these two units right now holding that line. So let's go over here. You'll see we've actually gotten some reinforcements here. So we're going to take these units and move them up here. to try to help reinforce a little bit. Yeah, we're not gonna have enough to unload them this turn, that's fine. Take this mechanized unit up here too. What do we have here? This tank division can come up. Let's put them, let's bring them here to the city for now and I think I can get you off because of the rail yard there. Okay, so that's something. And then this unit, take off rail mode, there we go. This unit we're now going to move up, right, to do kind of the same thing. We're going to get some forces trying to screen a little bit in front of this line. It's not much, but it, it will help we'll take you off the train. And then we're going to do the same thing with you down here in this swamp hex. Where now we change them from defense value one to three. And, and you know, that's not much. They're still going to break through. It's not like I think now they'll be able to hold a line or anything like that, but it just helps improve the, the position a little. We're going to take this other airborne unit, do something similar. I think probably have you move up here to these heavy woods. Back here, we can take these guys off the train. Our Yule, we have our HQ units. Okay. And then we've got another airborne brigade here. Take you off the train. Check rifle division. This airborne brigade will... Let's move them up here, maybe. Right, so we're going to let those airborne brigades be some screening forces in front of our lines. Just going to go through and take all of these off the train before I forget, and then we can look at whether or not we need to reposition any of them. Clicking on through. Okay. Now 
I think we'll take you north here. You can stay right there. Let's make sure I have fortification. Highlight on, I do. I just don't have any fortifications, which is a little depressing. Move you up here. Just kind of moving everyone a little north. A little north and just a little bit west. Okay, so that's helped a little bit. We're a little weaker than I probably would like here. But again, the priority for our defense is not the center, it's not the south, it's the north. It's the line from Smolensk to Moscow and the line from Peskov to Leningrad. Those are the priorities for us. Um, doesn't mean we don't care about these units, it's just some areas are more prioritized than others. These western front HQs, we're going to move back towards Kursk. Get them back there. And they're they're way over capacity and we're gonna keep assigning things to the western front, but the the fact is when this pocket gets collapsed, that's going to significantly reduce the number of units assigned to the western front. And before I forget, we're going to take these units, which I think are attached to Stavka right now. Yeah, the twenty first army. We're going to attach them to the Western Front. There we go. Now our color coding's back and nice. That's good. Here we've got some infantry divisions. I'm actually going to move up a little, again, to act as that screening force, right? But we'll have them there. Move you up here. That HQ here. Let's see where else we can go. Toss them in that swamp hex. There we go. City, maybe? Yeah. Okay. And I'm actually going to do the same here, too, with these airborne brigades. We're just going to move them up into these swamp axes. Go up here. And then this is just all going to result in a bit of a, a shuffle of forces north. I think this is all worthwhile work. Okay. So now we need to take these guys and move them north. We're going to have this gradual... Um, gradual movement of forces north because of how we've spread ourselves a little more thin back here. Which is fine. You're all staying there. Let's get you guys pulling back a little. That tank division doesn't stand much of a chance. Same thing with you. Get all of you guys a little further away from the front. Okay. Good stuff, good stuff. Now let's see. I think now these units we're gonna move up here. Right, again, moving them just a little bit more forward than we have been. Take everyone off the train real quick before I forget about anyone. We can't just go ahead and do the movement phase, but I find that sometimes if I don't focus on taking them off the train, if I don't move a unit, that I then forget about them stuck on the rail line, which isn't good. Yeah, so look how impactful that is when we move them into the proper type of terrain, right? defensive value 20 there, so I'm going to leave them right where they're at. Get them up. Right, so that, that all helps a little bit. And let's see here. We have... 
this kind of Kiev pocket really we um need to do what we can to try to protect the um the direct approach to Kiev a little better than we currently are looking. So like this rifle division, let's move you up here. No. Um let's see. I'm gonna try to slow them down early here. Let's put them there. Put them up here. Where does it make more sense there? That HQ unit will just pull back. That HQ unit will bring up. Okay. So they're just kind of the forward forward units there. They're going to be kind of a screening force. And down here, the tank divisions I do still want to kind of protect. So we're going to pull a lot of them back still. Get some of them maybe even into Kiev for now. are all the machine gun and artillery positions. You can go up there. You up there. This mechanized division will bring up there. Okay, so it's looking a little better around Kiev. Um, still worry a little bit about the north of Kiev here. So let's we have anything kind of that came in in the rear here we can move up yeah it's so like let's take this mechanized division and we'll have you come up here to Kiev and I can take you off the train because of the rail yard there this tank division can also come up same situation come off the train Another tank division. Move all three of these here into Kiev and take them off. Okay. This rifle division, we will move up here and next turn they can help kind of reinforce a little bit, but we don't have enough movement points to take them off the train right now. Okay. Probably moved you a little too far in the previous turn, so let's get you back here north of Kiev. Some of these tank units will move up. Move up this mechanized here. This tank division, I'm gonna get off rail mode now. This tank division can come back here. see this mechanized one will bring up here you up take you off the train and we really do start to get ourselves at a bit of disadvantage here because now as we look especially towards south of Kiev it's just so open such open terrain, there's not a bunch of swamp land or anything to help use as a defensive barrier. So it's just going to be a little bit more difficult um, to find good defensive positions. Get you back there. So I really do hope these guys can start fortifying a little bit. Move Get you up here. split it like that, I think. This rifle division we're actually going to bring into the heavy woods. Bring you into the heavy woods. I feel like it's some type of Winnie the Pooh story. The Hundred Acre Woods. And... Again, I'm going to bring 
bring some of these units north. So in this open terrain, I think we might leverage our tanks a little bit more. Oh, we pulled all of these infantry units too far back. Need to form a little bit more of a north-south line. Just fine. We can make an adjustment. None of our plans here were permanent. Right? It's all good. Keep you right where you're at, because you're actually in a pretty good position there. Take you back just a little bit. This mount division. Put you there. Security force goes there. Go there. Another mount division. Love these mount divisions. getting there. Lots of moves, guys. Lots of moves. But it's all building up towards trying to have some type of defensive line we can rely upon. Um, you, I might actually... Hold in that town, maybe. This border guards unit. We're just disbanding. They only have 40 men. This rifle division... I'm going to put you here in some of this rough terrain. Although because you're routed, that probably was a poor move. You guys, all of you, <laughs> are going to go into the hills, as they might say. It's amazing what a mountain division can do when they're in a mountain. Not actually a mountain, of course, but it's similar, I suppose. This tank division is probably going to get cut off, and I don't think there's anything I'm going to be able to do about it. So just create a slightly stronger stack there. You will move here. You can come up next to them. Right, so that's something. Looking in this pocket. I think I do want to move some of you up, and I may have moved you all back in the previous turn, which would have been a mistake on my part now on reflecting on the situation. But I think I want to put in a little bit more investment into holding these hills here, not making it so they can so easily cross through. You're only 114 men, so we're going to disband you as well. Yeah, some of these HQs are just going to bring back a little bit. Not too much, but a little. Same there. Okay. That 
mountain division. We will bring up here to these woods. Through there. This rifle division will go there. This armor I'm actually going to move down towards Odessa. That mountain division will go right there. Here. Let's create even a stronger force there. They will end up getting cut off, of course, but it's going to make it more difficult for the German side. These guys, we're going to set them on reserve as we start trying to build up the defense of Odessa and and I I'm not going to to put too much into holding Odessa um actually we're just going to retreat you because you're in a pretty poor state but it is something where I want to make enough of an effort that they don't just waltz into it, right? That's kind of the situation. I'm just going to stay where you are. Bring you here. Take you there. Southern Front HQ, we're going to move back. Very least to there. Take that mechanized unit up. Start pulling back here some of the infantry. That's a lot of men we can use for the actual defense of Odessa. Security force will there. Want some forces still, right? That strategy of trying to be screens. Um. Yeah. Okay. Not terribly happy with the strength of our defense of Odessa right now, but I, I think in a lot of ways it's just going to have to make do. Back here, this airborne brigade, we're actually going to move up here. Go. Start bringing up some forces from the Crimea. And I want to first make a stand here on the Dnieper River. Dnieper River, by the way, if you're wondering, um, it is, in fact, everywhere. Like it's sometimes it feels like it's the only river in all of Russia. Um, it just runs everywhere and is very large. So I'll say. Going back over here, I think we have some units we can probably toss on trains and get up towards the front. It's like that tank division will bring up. Let's see what else we have. Another tank division. Bring you up here. Rifle division. Can't get you quite as far, so we're gonna bring you up there. Still don't have enough gun load. Very well. Mechanized division. Starting to bring up some reinforcements for the next lines of defense. Mountain division. Gotta love me some mountain divisions right now. There we go. This rifle division we're gonna bring all the way up to Odessa. There we go. And... I think that about does it for what we had in our rear there. Okay. 
Okay, let's see what else do we have to deal with. Uh, we've got these units here in this pocket. I think I'm just going to move them north into this Swamp Hex. And look how much that increases their defensive combat value. So that's a good move. Let's see. Looking over here, we've got some rifle divisions. We've got a whole stack of them. I think I might move them back here into these woods. These guys we will, I think, leave right there, actually. Very good. Let's see. I think that might be the last of our encircled units in the south half that we need to address. So we've gone and from kind of Aryol, not Aryol, excuse me, uh, from Bryansk down to about Odessa, we've kind of redone some of our defensive lines. You see here we do, because we had such a shuffle of moving units north to cover decisions we made up near Smolensk, we find ourselves with a bit of a gap here north of Odessa, um, but I'm hopeful that as the width of the front gets a little less moving up the coast here, that we can then try to make more of a stand in these two cities, which Misha provided some great um, feedback on how to properly pronounce. I have not yet had time to, to practice those pronunciations, but I will give it an effort certainly in future effort episodes to to give those cities the respect they deserve. Um, looking through the rest of the front here, I just wanted to take another look at Peskov and say, you know, do we do we feel we have the right setup here? Because I really worry about this one. I, I really do. Um, and looking at the historical dates, it does look like they're a turn or two ahead of schedule. And considering it's turn two, that's pretty impressive. Um, I just... I wonder what can be done, but I don't know if it's much because of the forces they're bringing up. I think what I might do is move out this HQ unit. And I'm going to take back one of the stronger rifle divisions into the city itself. So now it's a defensive value of 30. And then... I don't know that there's much of a difference of having three versus one here. So I think I'm just going to take you back. That actually improves it. So it's kind of one more layer they have to go through, right? And then like this rifle division, I'm wondering if maybe I move them back as well. I think I will. See, now now if we do lose Peskov this turn, if they go straight through, which they might, they very well might, um, I feel then at the very least maybe there's a bit more of a second line to retreat to. Because that, that is what I worry about, is a breakthrough and not being able to contain it all the way up to Leningrad. So we've done that now. Um, let's, let's make sure we do our AI depot management. And we didn't spend probably as much time as we should have here on um, command assignments and such. So a few of these I'm just going to real quick bruise through and make sure we've got them to things other than Stavko, Western Front, etc. These guys... Oh, no. Just click there. I should have used the mini-map instead of scrolling. There we go. 67th Rifle Corps. We're going to toss you in the southern front. And... Yeah, we're, we're going to have a, a lot to do in the south, I think, in the future episodes. Um, but again, our priority, we must keep our priority here, is the Smolensk to Moscow pocket, followed by the Leningrad uh, defense. So we, we will stick with those two as being our priorities. I'm going to go ahead and end the turn now. And I am going to let it play through the German phase. That was another comment I'd received from one or two individuals. And I think they're right. It's 
it adds to the total episode time, but I do think it's very beneficial um, to to get a bit of a look into how they're progressing because it can be a little easy, I've noticed so far after the first turn, to look and say, oh, look, the red blob on the map has gotten closer. Um, <laughs> but was it by three hexes? Was it by ten? Where were their battles, etc.? I realized we didn't do too much of a review of the battle results in episode four, I think it would have been, where we had the beginning of turn two. Um, two reasons for that. One, again, just time constraints of how much we have to invest in the early turns of this scenario. The second reason, there, there probably wasn't going to be too much that was too exciting. right? Like looking at the battle results of our isolated and encircled units around Minsk isn't... Maybe I'm reading the situation wrong, but I don't think it's too terribly exciting. I think as they start to crash against these front lines we're building and such, it might be a little bit more interesting to, as we will do in future episodes and as we have done in the Stalingrad to Berlin scenario, um, we'll take a little bit of a deeper look into some of the battle results, do a little bit of dissecting of them, um, because I think it'll be interesting to see some of these decisions we're making, are they actually slowing them down? Are we actually inflicting casualties? Because if we're not taking out some of their armor, some of their motorized units um, in these early turns, that's a concern for us because the stamina and length of how, how long can the Germans keep those motorized units on the front line as combat effective as possible has a, a great influence on the outcome of all the proceedings. So it's still wrapping through the logistics phase. I still always look at the map here and go, I just, I, I flip-flop the red and the, the other color-shaded hexes, and I know it should make sense, but to me, I look at the red now going, wait a minute, they've captured Smolensk, when really we're just looking at it from the German perspective. It always trips me up a little bit. But let's see what the German player does during their turn. Going through their air phase now. I don't think there'll be too much. We certainly saw it die down a little in turn two after the initial assault. I mean, they used pretty much every airframe at their disposal in week one, right? Um, and it's kind of reflecting here. We're on day three and they've only done 60 sorties. So I'm betting the majority of them are all recon with some air superiority and such. We have managed to shoot down 11 of their airframes now, which is a home. They call it eight, seven percent, something like that. Their total sorties, which isn't a direct reflection because a sortie has more than just one airframe flying. But now we get into their actual turn, so let's see what they do. Looks like we're starting with up by the Riga pocket. Um, the first one, the tank division actually held. The second one, they faced off against infantry and they lost. And we're going to see this pattern where a lot of these are just going to be surrenders. Um, but it's we want to, as much as possible, try to slow them down. Still going through here. A couple of successful defenses, a couple of surrenders. Let's see. This is now up near the Minsk pocket. Back to Riga. Some of these I'm going to go through a little more quickly. This is kind of that outward net that we had projected south of Minsk, where our concentration of surrounded forces are. And it looks like it's doing the job of kind of slowing down and, and taking their attention away from us. And... Yeah, a lot of retreats instead of surrenders, and that's really good for us. That is really good. Surrenders mean we, we don't have anything there to slow them down in the next turn. A retreat just means they've lost some of their fighting force, but we can still slow them down in the next turn. So, it's good news. Yeah, that was the one we moved in and actually had 7 defensive value. It still wasn't enough. Held the first one, held the second it looks like. That is great news. So we held off two attacks there with that stack. 
Held off three attacks now. That was a security division attacking. Let's see if a fourth comes in. It does. We held them off. My goodness, what heroes we have here. Another infantry division attacked, and again we held them off. That's incredible. How many attacks are they going to make against this one unit? My goodness. We must be up to eight or nine attacks against this one sniper. And they're just throwing single security divisions at it. There have been a few infantry divisions tossed in as well, but... That was a different hex, and it looks like it didn't update the graphic of where we were. Getting a lot of holds, which I'm really happy about. I say that and then we surrender. It's pretty typical for anyone who's followed this right. Absolutely jinx myself with what's about to happen next. Let's see here. This is up by Peskov. This is the big one, right? So we're routed outside of Peskov against the Totenkopf SS Motorized Division. That's one of their strongest units. Here we surrendered. Yeah. So they're pushing pretty hard. They're not waiting. Which is what we probably expect. Oh, we lost Minsk. I had been hoping maybe we could hold it for a turn or two, but now they took it back pretty quickly. Here, this is kind of by all that hill and rough terrain, and um, it would seem they haven't cut them off yet. But these units we had down are going to be isolated that we put up into those hills. But if they get a chance to actually dig in for a turn or two, it might be really useful. This is now them pushing north towards Odessa. Yeah, and they're, they're getting pretty far up there. Okay. Yeah, they're coming right to the edge of the gates there. They still have a couple more rounds of attacks to make, I think. Because I don't think they're done yet. If they are, then we did amazingly well, but I don't think they're done. Okay, here we go. Let's see if they push on Peskov. Let's see. I'm really hoping we can hold it for at least a turn here. Okay. So... We weren't able to hold to the east of Peskov, so that means they're about to be encircled. They haven't yet. We actually hold the actual city for a turn. That's very good because it's the city that has the victory points. Oh, here's their push towards Smolensk. Look how far they got. My goodness, they went completely around some of the units that we put here. Completely around. And it looks like they've broken through one part of the line here. Wow, they got aggressive there. So this is difficult because we might need to now pull back to Smolensk proper and leverage some of the geography here for the rest of the defense, which is unfortunate. I was hoping to have maybe held them a little further outside of the city. We should be now coming pretty close to the end of their attacks. I say with bated breath and optimism. Of course I was wrong. Oh wow, look how close they got to Kiev. 
That's a little concerning. I didn't think they'd make it that far that quickly to Kiev. But then again, you have to remember there's there's a lot of instances where it's one or two Panzer motorized units that are just ten hexes in front of the actual front line, right? The problem is that they still are cutting off our lines of supply, they're cutting off our lines of retreat, all of these different factors. Um, it's not necessarily represented that the entire front line now is four hexes outside of Kiev. There's still hundreds of thousands of German infantry troops that are marching tens of hexes away. Okay, I think we're now past their attacks as it's on to the security units phase. We'll see here. Yep, looks like they are. Assault enemy weak points, just reading that's a little hilarious, as right now I feel like the entire front is a weak point, which is historically reflective. And now we get into their air resupply, so we're going to skip past much of this. Alright, now we get to our turn running through the logistics phase here. Let's see. Curious to see what the total number of men lost was. Assuming a pretty high number. Especially as they start doing so much cleanup effort of our encircled units. Okay. Doing the save, and then we'll have end of turn summary and news events. So, 191,000 men lost. That's actually not as bad as I thought it was going to be. 3,400 guns, 730 armor and 1,000 airframes. We had a net positive order of battle change of 234,000 versus their 60,000. So that's really good news for us. Guns were positive 1,000. Armor and airframes were negative. Germans stayed pretty much flat on armor and negative on airframes. 97 units in low supply, um, 58 under strength and 116 that are unready. That's some of the scary numbers, right? Here you can see we've got a lot of our units that we had pulled up from the reserves coming in, so hopefully we can get them down to Smolensk as soon as possible. Taking a look at it, it's not as bad as I feared, but boy, they pushed up strong. They really did. We now have some of these units isolated, but again, their purpose was to Right, make these units exert more movement points, more effort to get to the front line by having to go around them, uh, which hopefully we accomplished a little here. All right, let's also look at the new events. We see there are garrison shortages in Far East, Northern Front. Um, the Germans have had a setback in North Africa, which is pretty early in the scenario, I feel, to already be getting that. And in the Balkans and eastward evacuations. Um, yeah, so this this is historical flavor text, which is really interesting. The um, When the war began, uh, there was this, th this problem for the Soviets, and that was that pretty much their entire industrial base existed in the west of their territory, right? It existed in what is now modern-day Belarus, portions of Poland, the Baltic states, and Ukraine, really, too. Um, a lot of the industry that they built up was there. It was closer to Europe. It's easier for supply chains, right? It's If you're importing things from France or other European nations, it's closer, less distance traveled, etc., etc., etc. So the industrial base really was focused on the western front of the Soviet Union. Well, when this blitzkrieg happened against them, they actually said, well, we need to be able to outproduce and outlast the Germans. So they literally packed up onto trains and cars entire factories, and they moved them east. 
This then had a consequence of, in the very short term, their production fell quite a bit because all of their factories they had disassembled and packaged, right? Instead of getting another couple weeks of production out of them, they, they disassembled them. But they moved them east of the Ural Mountains, and there was this kind of concept that, you know, even if Moscow and Stalingrad and Leningrad are taken, there's no way the Germans would be able to execute a multi-year campaign east of the Ural Mountains because the terrain and logistics, they just wouldn't be capable of it. That was kind of the thought. So let's move them east of the Urals where our industrial base will always be safe, which means we will always be able to outproduce and outsupply our forces compared to the Germans, just given the size of the Soviet Union, which was much larger than Germany um, proper at the time. So that, that's what that flavor text is. And there I go diving into a historical tidbit, uh, not directly related here to the game, but hopefully it's not too dull. Uh, yeah, guys, thanks so much for your continued support of the channel, watching the videos. I do hope you've been enjoying them. I've been having a blast with the game in this new scenario. By far the most challenging thing I've done so far in a Gary Grigsby game, but I've really enjoyed it thus far. Um, and, and really want to extend a, a heartfelt thank you to so many of the members in the community who have been giving me tips and advice as I go through these playthroughs. Um, would also just say if you have any questions, comments, or feedback, please leave them in the comments section. I usually do have a couple day lag time, just as I'm not looking at it every single day. I'll often pre-record a bunch of episodes as my schedule allows and then schedule them out for future days. Um, but I, I will get back to all of you if you make a comment in there. And with that, Strategy Gamers, wishing you all a very excellent day. Bye now.